Welcome to The Hormone Hub, your go-to source for the conversations every woman in her 40s and 50s needs to have. I'm your host, Kylie Pinwell, your nutritionist helping you navigate your way through perimenopause, menopause and beyond so you can say goodbye to the endless fatigue, unexplained weight gain, hot flushes, PMS, mood changes and more that come on this hormonal roller coaster. If you missed the memo or think this is only for women of a certain age, ladies, it's time to think again. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my latest episodes, which are released every week. Share it with your friends, your sweaty sisters. The more we talk, the more we help each other. Welcome back to the Hormone Hub, everyone. Today, I am so excited. I have got Joe Zuleika here with me. And Joe is joining us from Utah in the States. Joe is a women's leadership coach. So Joe works with professional women, but also, you know, just women across the board, sort of in that midlife period. So, you know, and addressing all the things that hold us back. So, you know, things like that negative self-talk, we've all got that little chibba chubba in the back of our heads that, you know, tell us we're not good enough, we're not enough, we're not, you know, young enough, smart enough, thin enough, you know, all of those, all of the voices. We've all got it. I've got it. <laughs> Pops up every now and then. I'm getting better at squishing it down, but, you know, it's still there. Joe also helps women manage through people pleasing um, because we all, I think it's a natural sort of thing as women that we, you know, and I think we're all so capable. We're a bit too capable for our own good sometimes. And we just take on more and we take on more and we we add things onto in uh, sort of like the analogy of a basket that we sort of, you know, put things in our basket. And we don't actually start to notice that when that basket is overflowing and we've got things spewing out of our basket, we sort of say, yeah, yeah, no, I can do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. And, you know, we keep kids pleased. We keep partners pleased. We keep parents pleased, community pleased. And, you know, sometimes that's at our detriment. And also, you know, and I I don't know if it's a, I think it partly is hormonal, but just that overwhelm and that um, inability to make decisions, you know, that will help us because we tend to sort of naturally want to stay safe and stuck in our own little space. So these are some of the things that we're going to jump into with Joe today. So Joe, welcome to the show. I've been so excited to do this interview with you. <laughs> Thank you, Kylie. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. So, Joe, would you like to tell us sort of a bit about yourself and then sure. and also how you got into this sort of area? Yeah, thanks, Kylie. Sure. So I'm a woman in her mid 50s. I do live in the States. I'm married and I have two kids. And I have been in leadership development my entire life, helping people, all sorts of people, uh, level up their leadership. But what I've found, Kylie, is I've grown older. And as my community has also aged, you know, the people that are around me that have have been in my community, I've really focused on this stage of life for women where we find ourselves almost in sort of this identity crisis yeah. where we've been sort of like you talked about people pleasing, which is definitely a, a big part of what I coach around and teach and what I'm what is in my network and my community, finding that women have been so habituized, habituized, like um, socialized, have so um, fallen into these patterns of being the helper, like making other people um, satisfied, complete, um, you know, their dentist appointments made, their school shopping <laughs> done, that they're that hyper capable um way that you described the way women start to function is almost like th this distortion from knowing who they are inside because they've been so habitually pleasing and serving and helping everybody else outside of themselves. So I don't know, I kind of went really deep there super quick, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm really 
called and really spurred forward to speak with women about that process of putting ourselves last on the list or falling into that habit of serving and pleasing and helping and working so hard for other people's needs and then sort of leaving ourselves behind. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's something that that is starting to sort of, I guess, drop in my head more and more is Yes, I'm, you know, 51 now. And yes, you know, like while I don't necessarily love that number and I kind of, because I still feel 30, you know, I don't Mm -hmm. feel 50. Mm -hmm. So it's, but the thing that's sort of starting to drop in my head is like, well, hang on a second. My kids, you know, some of them drive now. They're a bit more independent. They're not, you know, and I'm actually getting really excited because I am not going to be an old lady anytime soon. That's just not happening. So, right. <laughs> and, you know, like I look at my parents and my parents' friends and they're still out and they're active and they're engaged and it's, you know, and then I look at other people sort of in their mid-70s who are mm-hmm. like they've already written themselves off as old, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they're sitting around drinking cups of tea all day. But it's sort of like I, I'm excited because I've potentially got another 30, 40 years left. And I want that to be yeah. fun. And I want it to be, yeah. you know, engaged, you know, I want to be engaged with life and involved and active. And, you know, and I think we're sort of really at that crossroads, which is beautiful, because, you know, yes, we've still got family that's important, but their, I guess, demands on our time and our needs them adult kids always yeah. need their parents yeah, <laughs> I, still right. need, I, I still need my mom <laughs> but it's sort of like you know there's just this shift in who I am yeah, yeah. Uh, it's sort of like now my whole identity isn't necessarily mum first right could, it always will be in my heart but it's actually you know I've deliberately brought my kids up to be independent so I want them to fly the nest and I yeah excited about that you know what I think is serving you so well there Kylie is that that your work as a nutritionist and helping women and it's like sparked this passion in you so that you have kept alive that fire of who you are outside of your identity as a mom as a a community member all the other things but I think that it can be super easy to 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 forget that if we don't tap yeah. into our passion or our purpose or yeah. our, you know, what we're meant to do outside of the traditional female roles that society gives us. But yeah. kudos to you because you see a path for how you can be yeah. an empty nester and, and yeah. still have passion and service and connection where yeah. a lot of women, I think, can we, we all can do this, fall so easily into just the, the role of being the mom, being the yeah. female figure in the family. And so who yeah. are you then when the kids fly the nest. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's where a lot of our community are sort of struggling with because they've never, yes, they might have careers, they might have jobs, but yeah, they haven't really, you know, considered themselves so much, Um, you know, and where, you know, is their health a priority? If it's not, you know, why aren't they taking the steps that they need to? If, is it their, you know, they need, you know, more stimulation outside the home. And, you know, one of the things, a conversation I've had so many times is like I've asked women, okay, what can you do for you? You know, and it's been Mm -hmm. such a long time since they've actually done it. And I sort of, you know, what hobbies, what do you enjoy? And they sort of sit there with this blank face and they go, oh, I actually don't know. Um, Yeah. And it's, you know, and I think we just get caught up in our day-to-day life that we do sort of let our own passions slide. And it's funny, I had a conversation the other day with a lady and I said, well, what did you do, you know, what did you love doing before you had kids? She goes, oh, yeah, well, I, you know, I was a dancer and I did this and I did that. And I'm like, well, why can't you do that now? She's like, oh, well, I'm 20 kilos heavier and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, maybe if you're dancing, <laughs> that would help with the 20 right. kilos. And she's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, everything shifts, right? It's all yeah. connected. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And just that, that, I guess, that mental load and lifting that and lifting that, you know, I guess we we sort of tend to, uh, limit ourselves in our own heads because mm-hmm. we're so, you know, and naturally we're exhausted. 
you know, mm-hmm. that's a hormonal shift that makes us tired. You know, we, we're carrying all the balls. We're, you know, our basket that we're carrying around is full. So we are a bit tired. But I think part of that is because we, we haven't got that thing that lights us up either. Right. Right. And so that's the important thing is to to come back into knowing who are you and what makes you tick and spending just a little energy inward, even if it feels uncomfortable, if it feels sort of antithetical to your um, to a, your notion of how you should be focusing on other people and maybe you shouldn't be selfish and these types of ways that we um, sort of beat ourselves up and make ourselves eat last. We make ourselves last on the list. We we feel like that's the only appropriate way to be. But the the net effect of that, the the sum is that we end up just being smaller and smaller and less and less clear on who we are, what where our heart beats, what we're meant to be and do and what we want, where our passions are. It's okay to think that way. It's not, it's not selfish. It's not being a bad mom. It's not, you know, being uh, self-centered or, or inappropriately uh, focused. It's yeah. actually really important. Yeah, for sure. And where would you suggest, like if we've got ladies listening to this going, yeah, that sounds mm. great. Where do I start? Like where, yeah. where, where would you start? Well, I, I often start with my clients at like the simplest of tasks. It's sort of to, I have this one thing that I have gals do uh, just called the tune in to you, a three-step process that you, you do, you put like a little post-it, little sticky note on your, on your steering wheel, on your bathroom mirror, on your phone, as it reminds you just to kind of shake yourself out of the autopilot that we can fall into just living our days and spinning all the plates and doing all the things and ask yourself three questions. This is like, so this is so elementary, so basic. You know, when we're talking about your life's purpose, I'm going to talk about something very simple to start, yeah. which is, I think, mm, yeah, I probably right? went too big too fast. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, it just to, to ask yourself, okay, what am I feeling right now? I can explain these two. That's number, number one. Yeah. How do I know it? And what do I want to feel? So there's just the three questions I have my my new clients ask themselves to tune into themselves. The first is, what am I feeling right now? And that's just a quick inventory like, huh, I actually am a little breathless. I haven't really been thinking about anything. I don't know what I'm feeling. I've been racing around. I'm running through my to-do list in my mind. I'm thirsty. Uh, You know, things that you can just realize when you take a moment to become more aware uh, to do that inventory. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. And, and, And then the how do I know it is fascinating. It's like, you, you actually have to ask yourself, is this like a physical response that I'm perceiving right now when I tune in? Like, am I feeling anxious and buzzing and frenetic in my body? Am I feeling a little panicky emotionally, physically? Or is it in my head with like swirling thoughts? Am I just thinking, thinking, thinking and trying to process a lot of um, cognitive data, think and figure things out? Or am I feeling it? Am I feeling it sort of in an emotional space of like, feeling sad or bad or um, alienated or distant or annoyed or irritable. So when I ask the gals to start tuning into themselves, what we're doing is we're, we're starting to articulate how we process sensation and incoming inputs. Is it that we think them that we feel them, or that we experience them sort of physically and viscerally. So is it head, heart, or body? I love that. And yeah, yeah, just even doing that, Kylie, helps, just helps you, like, shake up the, the unconscious behavior of getting through your day and being more aware, wait, hang on, what is going on for me right now? And that leads us to the third question, and how do I want to feel? So 
if a gal is doing this inventory and she realizes that she's racing in her car to drop off the kids and then go to work, that how she has been feeling is panicky or too busy or overwhelmed or late. And the way that she knows that is that her body is just like buzzing with, you know, anxiety or with fight or flight hormones and just feeling sort of on edge. When she asks herself, how do I want to feel? Then she's inviting that it's possible to feel different and that it's a choice. She can consciously decide to slow down, to take a deep cleansing breath, to think about her day in a more strategic way rather than having her day run over her. And just that three-step process I have found has been like, if you do it over and over and over and over again, what you're doing is you're building this fluency, this self-knowledge about who you are and how, how you want to be, you know, just a very beginning, um, little gem of what needs to come forward so that you're more, knowing what you want out of life. Yeah, I love that. And that's just such a simple thing. And it doesn't mean you have to sit and journal and, you know, like that's great if you can. But, yeah, you don't have to sit, journal, meditate, any of that. You can just think about it, you know, and just answer yeah. it in your head. And I think to, to sort of start that process and think about how you feel, how you want to feel, you know, what's going on in your body, I, I think that's really, really great. This Hormone Hub episode is sponsored by The Well-Balanced Woman. If you've been on a hormonal roller coaster, feeling bloated, your digestion isn't the best, and you know you're sick and tired of feeling lethargic with your weight creeping up, then this is the right program for you. I'm right there with you across the 12 weeks to hold your hand, and I'll give you a loving kick up the bum if you need it. The Well-Balanced Woman is your personalised four-phase program created to help you regain your energy, balance your hormones and fire up your metabolism so you get the results you're after. The link with all the details is on our show notes or over at kyliepinwell.com forward slash wellbalanced woman. How would you sort of suggest, because we've all got, like I said in the intro, we've all got this little negative, oh, well, who yeah. are you to... Yeah. Who are you to? And it's funny. So I've had like over the last four weekends, I've had four long weekends away. So now that we can travel and we can do all the things, you know, we're now having the catch up. So one of them was a catch up, you know, at like this beach holiday place that we used to go to all the time. We haven't been there for, for two years, obviously, and we all went. So there were people coming up from Sydney. We went south. A great weekend. There was bushwalking, there was way too much red wine, there was laughing, there was, you know, all the things. Lovely. That's great. The next weekend was uh, in wine country and I was with girlfriends. We were supposed to go for our 50ths last year and COVID couldn't go, so we had it this weekend and we just laughed the whole weekend. Then I had a weekend um, away with my husband Um, It was for our 20th wedding anniversary, so we just had this, you know, great weekend away. And, again, it was the sun was shining, it was fun, there's no kids, and we had, like, proper conversations that we haven't had since probably the last time we went away together. Um, So good. This weekend just gone, I had a weekend away um, with, I'm in a mastermind, like a business group, and it was, you know, with our mastermind group, and it was fantastic. And the conversations that we had about, you know, what are our biggest dreams, what are our biggest things? And just to be surrounded by women having those big conversations was huge. And then I got back and then, you know, I was sort of on a high and and one of my clients sort of said to me, she goes, oh, I would love to go away for a weekend, but I can't. Mm. Like, of course you can, you know, you just make it happen. And, okay, four weekends in a row was probably a bit extreme and <laughs> ideally I would have loved to have strung it out a bit longer <laughs> or spaced it a bit better, but it was just the way it was and it worked, you know, the kids were fine. The, you know, my husband was fine, you know, because he was with mm-hmm. me two of those weekends, but it just worked out that, you know, yeah. we've got grandparents around now, which we haven't had for 10 years. We've got um, friends who, you know, happy to, you know, yeah, sure, I can have your kid for the weekend, no worries, you know, and it was just 
people are, I think, more accommodating and supporting you because I certainly had more positive reflections back by, oh, wow, that's great. You know, I'm glad you did that. Good for you, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Certainly had yeah. positive reflections. But, you know, it's it's so good for the soul. Like my cup is full and I feel amazing. I love it that you're representing that. Like we probably yeah. need more demonstration of how that can be okay. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody who models that for us that's not sort of the selfless martyr version of a, of yeah. motherhood that um, yeah. that keeps herself home and feels yeah. like well me last. Yeah, it's yeah. it's giving yourself permission knowing that you living a big grand life and having that that environment to talk with your girlfriends about your dreams and your spirit and your desires is yeah. the fuel that then will ripple through back to your family like we need oh. to feel really comfortable yeah. receiving that kind of attention like allowing our husbands to look after the children the grandparents and allowing ourselves to spend money and go stay in a hotel or go to wine country because it's it actually is the the richest way that we can feed our family and feed our culture and feed yeah. our feed womanhood by saying yeah. I matter I get to do things I get to yeah. inspire and be inspired keeping ourselves small doesn't achieve anything it doesn't no. satisfy anything or anybody no no definitely but you know look I haven't always done that and you know there's certainly a big chunk of my probably 30s and 40s where you know I was the martyr and I was sort of like oh I can't go away I can't afford that I can't I can't get someone else to look after my kids I can't leave I can't you know and all of this sort of stuff so how would you sort of where where do we start when we look at addressing that negative you know, that little voice who wants to I think it's born. Yeah. Thanks for asking Kylie. I think it's, it's like, it's partly, you know, so socially uh, engendered in us. It's sort of taught to us at a young age. It's how we adopted our worldview. Like, you know, mummy would say, you know, don't be too loud or make sure that you, you know, say thank you. And like, we were socialized and conditioned to be appropriate people and to be like, you know, functioning well. And yeah, but it, but it, it becomes distorted when then we only care about what others think of us, right? And that yeah. we are all of our activities and our actions and our behaviors and our answers to requests become um, formulated in a way to please others because it makes us feel like we're doing the right work, we're doing the good job. Yeah. And I think that that negative inner critic is born of that same spot too, of where when we mess up, if we're really socially advanced, and I think so many women in your community are, like they're very perceptive, they're very caring, they're very aware of how they're coming across. And when you can modulate how you are being to adapt into some different, you know, social structure, like, you know, that we sit up straighter when we're around somebody that we think is has influence and we're more casual and easygoing when we're at home like those are these these ways that we can really um shape shift to fit in and when we notice ourselves maybe not doing that well or if we're displeasing someone or if we make a mistake or we humiliate ourselves or we get it wrong or we feel rejected that inner critic is going to crop right up and start screaming at us about all the ways that we should have done it better. And it's, I think maybe the important thing to note about that is in my experience, I don't think there's a single person that I've met woman or man that doesn't have it. So maybe just understanding it's part of the human condition that if you um, are socialized, you'll have this inner governor that tells you, "Oh, oh, 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 not so fast. Don't do that. And, um, and so just know, like not shaming ourselves for having it, but also realizing that it doesn't really serve us anymore. We're not four years old and we don't need to be um, constantly shape shifting the fit in with society. We can be bolder and more courageous, Yeah, definitely. but but it's, um, it's challenging. Hey. Yeah. But I also think, you know, this is part of this liberating part of getting to this age where, you know, we just, don't give a damn anymore. You know, like <laughs> you become, I mean, I certainly, 
I don't care what the mums at school think, you know, and it's I funny. love it. <laughs> my, you know, I'm a lot older with my youngest daughter, particularly I'm a lot older than a lot of the other mums, you know, whose first child is the same age as my youngest child. So, and it's quite funny. It's, it's like, I actually don't care what you think, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's, you know, no, I'm not the perfect parent. It's my third child. And, you know, I forget parent teacher night and I forget to send yeah. her in the right uniform. I mean, luckily yeah. my daughter is very self, and I think she's had to be, she's very self-managing. Um, so she gets it right. And, yeah, I ask yeah. her what's going on. She doesn't ask me what's going on. Um, but, you know, and I think that's going to be benefit her later in life for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's beautiful. But I know, you know, the whole, you know, the perfect parent and, you know, all of that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, I actually don't, I could not care less. You know. I love it. Well, and as I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, like we can actually see each other. We both have gray hair. Like we're also, yeah, we not, do. <laughs> we're not buying into that culturally, you know, required yeah. norm that we, we pretend to look younger than we are or yeah. that that's something that we, but that's what, that's what I think you're standing for. Kylie is like, you can be the mom that, that goes off to the wine country quite happily and the husband and the grandparents will hold the fort and you can have your hair look however you damn well please and that's that's a beautiful (laughs) model for us to see that you can live authentically and be courageous and be and be your own um you know be real with what matters to you um but I think there are lots of gals that maybe feel like that's too risky that that will somehow really topple the structure that is just barely holding in place. And they feel afraid to, to somehow shake up that structure that feels safe to fit in, to, um, to make sure they're gaining favor and that other people are approving. Um, that's just a very, that's, it takes a little while, I think, to kind of dissolve some of that, yeah. um, that that's inside of us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's it. And I think it's, I guess for me, like with the whole, you know, hair thing and it sort of like came down to, okay, well, what's really important to me? You know, like and certainly, you know, as much as I love my hairdresser, I was sitting for, you know, two hours every two or three weeks in the hairdresser just to get my roots done that is not important to me it was just like I would rather stick a fork in my eye so that was <laughs> that was sort of how my hair kind of thing came and likewise like I'm not invested in nails you know getting my nails mm-hmm. done and things like that yes it's it would be a nice thing to do but to be honest like my time I would rather go for a walk I would rather catch up with a friend I would rather you know and I think this is where I, you know, and it's been a process for sure, because I was certainly at one point in my life, you know, doing the big gym workouts, making sure the hair was right, the, you know, everything was, you know, so-called perfect. But really, you know, I was probably a pretty crappy mum then, you know, I was so caught up in myself, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, from a, I guess, a looks point of view Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I probably wasn't as present as I am now with my kids. Whereas now mm-hmm. I've sort of let go of all the fluff that I don't, that aren't, isn't important to me. And I yeah. think this is where too, where it, what's important to each of us is different for sure. But, right. you know, I kind of recognize the things that didn't matter, the things that did matter. You know, I'm definitely a nicer person if I've been exercising. Mm-hmm. I definitely mm-hmm. feel better within myself if I've been eating well. I definitely know I need social connection. You know, I work at home on my own, in my Mm -hmm. own little space. So if I don't connect with humans, and I think this is why I'm so fired up after the last four weekends, because I actually had physical connection with humans instead of, you know, online connection. Um, And, yeah, that's just really, really filled my cup. So I can... uh, yeah, I think. yeah. You know what you just named right there? You basically just ran through a very easy for you to name list of your core values. Yeah. And I don't know that everybody listening might actually be able to do the same, that, yeah. that you know human connection is really important, that you know you're a nicer person when you're exercising. And you also know that having like all the external trappings of what so like a socially acceptable, beautiful woman at 51 would look like it, it, that that's actually not a high value for you, but yeah. that, that eating well and, you know, being 
on point with what you put in your body, that is a value. I think just actually being able to sift and sort through some of those things. How do I want to eat? How do I want to be? And how do I get my energy? How do I um, restore? How do I fill my cup? What does it look like for me? For an introvert, for a woman who has little kids, for you know all the the wide spectrum. Each of us can know that yeah. for ourselves, and when we do, that's the powerful way that we can break out of those patterns of people pleasing and being externally validating seeking and actually coming back into more agency of wait what am I doing today that's going to light me up and when you're doing that you're not only filling your own cup but you're then being more capable to serve every all the people in your life because you're coming from a very abundant place a very full up a very happy a very fulfilled and satisfied and rich place right yeah absolutely absolutely oh love this that's so good (laughs) right All right, Joe. But, um, yeah. If people want to find out a bit more about you and what you do, where can they find you? Or oh, yeah, thanks you like, for asking, Kelly. And, yeah, tell us a bit about how you, you know, can help women. Yeah. So my, so you did introduce me so appropriately that I do identify as a women's leadership coach, but I really talk about women leading their lives, like being a leader inside your life. Like even if you're quote unquote, just the leader of your family or the leader of your household, or, uh, you know, you're, you're in your friend group in all of those spaces, you are you have the capability to create an impact. And so I'm not just talking about women who are professional and corporate and working outside the home. All of my work is about a woman finding out for herself from the inside out, how am I leading my life? How do I make an impact? So um, the fun ways that you can connect with me are on Facebook. I've got a lovely, glorious group called Women Who Lead With Heart. That is a free Facebook group that's evergreen, open all the time where um, women from all over the world are inside sharing inspiring content. I like to say it's for what I call strong and sensitive women. It's both women who are, you know, making bold moves or desiring to make a big splash, but also feeling too and and having that sensitivity and sometimes that people pleasing or negative self-talk that that brings that tension of, um, sometimes holding ourselves back. So it's just a lovely community of women sharing content that is so supportive and uplifting and inspiring. And I come inside that group once a week and do live trainings on things of like, how do you become more emotionally intelligent? Or how can you hack your hormones to be happier? Or how do you deal with the inner critic um, or the, you know, that self-sabotage that happens? So th- that's a wonderful way. It's, I welcome anybody in your community who'd like to come join there. Thank um, you. And then, <laughs> come on I over. I'm not in and, there yet. <laughs> yeah. I, and then from there, I offer all kinds of things. I have women's leadership retreats that I'll advertise in there. I have smaller programs of women who really want to do the deeper work of understanding their leadership from the inside out of like breaking down some of those negative thought patterns and that imposter syndrome. So that's that's my paid program that's called Completely Confident Leadership that um, you can learn about inside my my Facebook group as well. But that's probably the best way to um, to connect and, and feel inspired and um, just join a lovely community of um, like-minded women yeah fantastic fantastic well joe i think thank you so much for coming on today i think thank you for having me yeah my pleasure i think this has been a really important conversation and it's it's part of like our bigger picture so yes i'm a nutritionist yes we talk about um you know nutrition and food and hormones and everything but I think it it goes beyond that we need to sort of you know from a who we are and who we want to be sort of perspective you know this is that that midlife transition that you know it's our time to shine ladies (laughs) yes love it Kylie well thanks for letting me come on and just share the that spirit with you and spend this time with you today I appreciate it Thanks so much, Joe. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will see you next time on The Hormone Hub. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. 
you can head on over to the show notes at kyliepinwell.com slash podcast where you'll find all the links and I have a little bonus surprise waiting for you. Before we go, it would mean the world to me if you head on over to your favourite po- podcast channel, subscribe and leave a review. Make sure to screenshot it, DM it to me so I can thank you personally. Then stay tuned for next week's episode. Can't wait to see you there.